Hello and welcome to the Mindset Michelle TV show. We're so super, super excited to have you joining us again for another fabulous episode with another expert in another incredible area who will share with us her tips and suggestions about how to create that fabulous mindset. So hello and welcome, Nicola. Hello. Hi, Michelle. Thank you very much for having me. It's, it's wonderful to talk to you. It's so fabulous having you on the show. And for those of you that aren't aware of Nicola, she's the founder and CEO of JPP Talent JJP. JJP. <laughs> you write her down and you still get it wrong. JJP Talent Solutions, where she's for over four years now been specialising in that tech IT recruitment space. But I'll let, before I keep getting anything else wrong, I'll let Nicola give us a little bit more background because... How does somebody become an entrepreneur and set up a recruitment agency and also in that tech recruitment space, which is, again, typically a blokey kind of world? So I'm fascinated, Nicola. Please explain to us, how did you come to be in that space? Well, thank you very much for that introduction, Michelle. And I think the first thing I've got to say, and I should have said it to you before, is where the origins of JJP are. And that would have made it easier for you to remember. So they are the initials of my two children, Jessica in the black and white photo there. She's much younger. She's uh, she's about three there, but she's 17 now. And Jasmine, who's about five uh, there, and she's 12 now. And then Purdy, who's my little black and white dog. And she's about eight weeks there and she's five now. So that's where JJP comes from um so in answer to your question i started recruiting back in london in 1999 so a very very long time time ago the turn of the century as my darling children say um so working in london as you say it was very boyish it recruitment back then oh my goodness fascinating stories that I could tell you um some that are bad some that are good and some that are very ugly if I'm honest with you <laughs> so it was an interesting time to be uh, at the turn of the century working in in the tech market um so I worked in London until 2005 when I had Jessica um, and that's when I set up my first recruitment business, actually, because uh, I couldn't face going back down to London with a new baby um, and set up my own business in it was in Yorkshire. But most of my clients, which is where I'm originally from, but most of my clients were in um, in London in the southeast and did that for six years. Um, and I wouldn't say it was really being an entrepreneur at all. It was more, I had this expertise and I toyed with lots of different, possibly entrepreneurial ideas that were quite frankly, probably a bit plain silly. And my husband said, why don't you do what you're good at? Which is where this organization, my first recruitment company, JJP Talent Salute, not JJP, it was Morgan Steel uh, was my company in the UK. Um, and did that for six years. And then my husband got a job opportunity in Australia. Now, I'd always wanted to move to Australia. I was brought up on neighbours and home and away. Um, always had the dream of doing the backpacking thing when I was young. But I went to London, never really ended up doing it. Well, I didn't. I came to see some friends for a few weeks uh, before we were married. But then had children and thought that's never going to happen. And then he got this job opportunity. So I said, yeah, why not? We've got two young children, but they're really easy to move. The youngest was one at the time. Um, and then packed up and moved to Brisbane, which was just over 10 years ago, April 2012. And it's been really quite a journey since then. So I went back to agency recruitment. And quite honestly, Michelle, it was just, it was the same as it was at the turn of the century. And I changed and it hadn't. Um, and I, I joined three different companies and I realised that the problem 
actually wasn't them, it was me. I needed to be on my own. Um, and that's when I set up JJP. Um, what a lovely story, Nicola. And um, you tell it so well. And, and thank you for clarifying about the JJ and P. I really love yeah. the two children and the dog. And, and it, it shows again that really family focus and, and family ethos sort of behind um, the work that you do. And I, I'm also fascinated by um, you recognising how it was you that shifted. So um, I, I don't think it's just at the turn of the century that the, the recruitment <laughs> and the, the blokey kind of IT recruitment thing. Um, I, I was privileged to attend a sales leaders forum this week and um, it was all blokes. And, and I, I kind of yeah. listened to them talking and thought, it could be the turn of the century, it could be 20, 30 years ago because they were saying the same things. And, and part of that was there was no women in the room and there was no young people in the room. But how then with that interesting, because you, you have such a wonderful insight then into what was important to you. And, and yes, it's called entrepreneur, but back in when you were first doing it, it would have been a small business owner. So with all of that courage and conviction and, and wonderful, wonderful family focus. What do you now, what would you say now is your idea or what would you say is your your um, definition for you of success? That's a really good question. And again, since I was a little girl, for me, it's always been freedom. Freedom for me is so, so important. I remember vividly, and I don't have uh, dreams. When I was, I mean, literally, when you're asleep, dreams of flying and having that freedom. I don't have them anymore. I really miss them. But that just freedom to do what you want to do. And when I do some of these um, psychometric type tests, I can't remember what it's called, but I come out as a rebel which when I was young, I was like a proper rebel. Now I'm more my rebelling to make the world a better place um, and supporting the underdog, having been values driven, leading with compassion, but again, having that freedom to be able to do that. Because what I found is when you're working, for example, in agency recruitment, it's all very much about the dollar, um, which of course, money is important at the end of the day, you do need money to give yourself some freedom. But I think by leading with, for example, having that freedom, having a positive impact as well, um, that the money comes at the end of it anyway. So and when I say positive impact, I'm talking to hundreds and hundreds of candidates, thousands. Um, I'd love to place every single one of them in the in a role I'd be you know Richard Branson type rich it can't happen but what I can do is every conversation and touch point that I have with that person is at least make them feel better about themselves or have given them some kind of insight so when they're dealing with me or one of my members in my team they don't feel crushed even if they haven't got the role for example to give them some positivity and have some positive, go away with some kind of positive feedback or ways that they can improve themselves. And another example of positive impact would be, for example, um, I'm a, a member of B1G1, you know, the Global Giving Initiative. So for every placement that we make, that, for example, is a year of e-learning for a child in rural India which doesn't cost, it sounds like a big financial deal. It's not. It's, but for the person in rural India, the child in rural India, it makes a huge difference. But an action here is having a really positive impact somewhere else in the world. Um, and I really love how um, I, I can hear, because when, when you're talking about your definition of success um, and it comes through with that, that enthusiasm that you're talking mm -hmm. about, when you're talking about JJP talent solutions, the um, the freedom, you know, to manage the team, to set up your business, all of that, and and of course managing whilst you have the, the children and the, and the husband and the dog, 
Um, but that freedom element, I can really see for you that, that that is success, you know, having the freedom to do what you want with the business and, and also to direct what you're doing and what you're doing with the business into that positive impact size so that you, you everything from um, making candidates who, who can, it can be a slog for some of them, feel a little bit better when they're dealing with you or your team. And also with the B1G1, I, I really hear that, that um, in, in terms of your business, like I said at the beginning, it, it's the family. So those sorts of family values of, of caring and nurturing for candidates, even if it's just for one or two touch points, but also taking that caring um, even further out to caring for the planet and the education of the, the child in India. What, what a beautiful way of looking at success. And, and it's, you know, yes, the money's there, but it's not the focus for you. Absolutely. And actually, one of the things I should have mentioned before, it was Jessica that was the catalyst for the first business because she was a baby and I didn't want to go back to work in London. But she was actually for the second one as well, because she was quite young and she's always been very grown up for her years. And she said to me, Mummy, you were so much happier when you had your own business. And that's when I thought, do you know what, Jessica, you write. And that's when I went out and did it. Um, and then you also talk about having that. Well, I talked about having that positive impact on candidates. Now, at the moment, the market is really buoyant. It's a candidate driven market. If you're a candidate and you've got software development skills, you are in a fabulous position. But the world isn't always like that. And sometimes, I mean, for example, 2020, when the pandemic hit and there were mass layoffs, you need to be treating people in a very gentle and sensitive way or 2008 or going back to 2001 as well that obviously redundancies happen all the time but being able to to deal with people in a sensitive manner and you can't necessarily you can't magic jobs up but you can give people light and hope um and help them get to the next stage, even if it's not necessarily me placing them in the role, but helping them and guiding them so that they get that right career move. Um, so, I know, and I think that that's very true. Um, in fact, we were talking earlier this week about somebody that we know, and and as you said, you know, the market is very buoyant at the moment, but their large global organisations still lay people off globally. So that yeah that, unfortunately that that unemployment and that redundancy can happen whether the market's buoyant or whether the market's down yeah. and, and you, you yeah. talked about 2008 20 you know all of these different um stress points in the market if you like so if we were to look at and think about suggestions given that you have this unique lens because you're, you're dealing with people at quite a vulnerable point in their lives where they are either checking out the market or they've had to check out the market because they have to get a new role. What would be some of the suggestions that you might give to people for how they can keep that positive mindset in, in what can sometimes be a bit of a difficult slog? Yes, I think the first thing I always do is make a list because then you can start being proactive and you can break it down. And that sounds really simple. Um, but also have a multi-pronged strategy. So don't just sit at your laptop applying for roles on Seek. Yes, apply for roles on Seek, but don't have that as your only strategy. Talk to lots of recruiters and then work with one that you feel that you can really trust. Um, and that you can partner with effectively. Now we can get out and about and meet people, which is fabulous. But before, even when we had COVID and we were uh, in lockdown and what have you, you could still meet people online. So you need to be out and about meeting people. You could have a meetup for breakfast, lunch and dinner. Worst case scenario is you go get some free food and a drink. 
best case scenario is that might lead you to the ideal job opportunity but you're going to meet some really interesting people along the way so my first tip is get out there don't just be stuck at home feeling miserable that you don't feel you're making any progress go to the meetups do the networking talk to people um, and have those connections i think from your general mental mindset connection is so so important and, and also- i love that um i love that point about you know part of that making that list and it would be around how am i going to expand my network how am i going to connect in with my network and for some people you know um working from home all the time and and suddenly going back out to seeing people in person again or even if they were naturally more introverted before anyway that getting into the um well the habit and the discipline to go out and to meet people and and like you said whether it's meet or or wherever I, i i talk about this part in the brain that's the reticular activating system and it's actually inbuilt so that if, if you're thinking about buying, say, a um, white, not much, maybe not so much white, but a blue car, a lovely blue car, and suddenly you will see blue cars everywhere, and it's because you switched on that part of the brain to say, look out for blue cars. It, it goes yes. back to the caveman times when we needed to look out, say, for food. So you'd be looking out for a rabbit or something to not starve, and, and that part of your brain was then super sensitive to it. Um, and I think that getting out, which is your point, getting out and then really reinforcing that you're, you're telling yourself and you're telling your brain, turn on the part that's looking for a job in this area with these types of people, with this type of money, all of those um, things that you're looking for. Absolutely. And I think you make another really good point there as well, is that power of attraction. So if you're going out, with a more positive outlook, you're going to attract more positive outcomes as well. You know how you mentioned you're thinking about buying a blue car and then all you see are blue cars. But if you do have that, it's amazing how, if you have a more positive outlook, more positive things will happen. If you go with the attitude like that, and it is, it's marvelous and it does happen. And your other point, yes, we have for the last couple of years not been out and about as much. We haven't been socialising. We haven't been networking. I'm an extrovert. I love going out and talking to people, meeting new people. That I, that, I absolutely thrive on that. Um, but we all feel a little bit nervous, I think, Um because we've been held away from it a little bit. So everyone's feeling a little bit like that inside anyway. And I think when you're going to these networking events, don't go with an attitude of what can I get out of it? The old handing out your business card mentality is just feels extremely slimy and uncomfortable. But it's like, what can I learn or what can I give? And I don't mean physically give a gift, But what can I give to other people? What knowledge can I impart or what connections can I make? If you come from that angle, it's actually much easier because you're not wanting to take, take, take. And I think that's when it feels more unnatural and unauthentic and and everything. So, And I think that that, that's a great point about, um, you know, we're all a little bit nervous going out now and... and, um, perhaps going to the events without necessarily thinking, oh, you know, I'm going to meet somebody and that will give me a job, et cetera. But you, you, you're being receptive, like um, looking for the blue car. You're being receptive to what people are saying and, and suggestions. I think another lovely part of that um, that I've seen work absolute miracles is actually just explaining to people what you're doing and what that you're looking for work. And suddenly people shift. You you see it all the time. They want to help. And so um, I think a big part of, you know, getting out there is very much around um, on social media and and as much as you feel comfortable saying to people, and you see it more and more nowadays, where people are saying, you know, I'm looking for this type of job. If you know anybody that can help me, 
And it's it's coming at that with that gratitude that people may not necessarily be able to help you, but their sister, their brother, their husband, their wife, they may know somebody in that area. And, and again, it may not be a direct shift. It may be you need to go into this role to then go into that role after some training, et cetera. But I and, think... Yeah, I was just going to say, you made me think about something else, about connections. Um, so, yeah, be in person, but you can also be doing those connections on LinkedIn. If you connect with somebody, don't just send... Um, connection requests without any message because uh, that's like why have you sent this um, so put a message but don't say dear Nicola I want a job because it's not very appealing it needs to have some kind of meaning behind it and I had this there was this young international student and what she did is one of my posts she liked it she commented on it she sent me a message I felt compelled to talk to her and actually put her forward for a role. She didn't get the role because they thought she was probably too good for it and they didn't feel that she it would maintain her interest for long enough. So it wasn't a fault of her own. But she'd gone through, there was no way I could not have spoken to this young woman. And she's she was brilliant. But I think the thing is, again, it's about giving on social media as well so she gave something by liking the post by commenting on it by that kind of reciprocal approach which I think is really important not going even on social media with a take 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 attitude um and most people do come with a want to help people and even if they can't help them as you say directly they'll go well maybe you should go in this direction I did that today actually with somebody, he's down in Sydney. I don't have any roles in Sydney, but he um, he wants to work. He wants to work for a company like Atlassian, and I have connections at Atlassian. I don't recruit for them because they've owned, got their own recruitment um, framework and everything. But I put him in touch and said, you know, work, help each other out, and and see what you can do. So he could well get the opportunity there or it will lead into another opportunity elsewhere. So I think, again, it's going with that openness um, to help. So. Very much. You reminded me, funnily enough, um, during one of the lockdowns, I actually fostered a cat. Oh. And, um, <laughs> there's lots of other funny stories about fostering the cat and ending up in hospital when it bit oh, me. Oh, gosh. <laughs> but, but she told me that. It was it was a very, very funny story. But um, one of the reasons why I remembered it is that the lady that is a cat mad neighbor um, that, you know, spends a lot of time and effort taking care of the street cats. She was at the time working for one of the big tech companies. It wasn't um, I won't say the name, but it was like an Atlassian. And um, so I ended up making like this contact in, you know, one of these big tech houses so I could ask her questions about things. But it was all to do with, you know, this random cat, <laughs> completely separate to, you know, anything. And, and that's where I think your wonderful point about getting out there, because you just never know when you're doing life where it might lead you. Absolutely. And, yeah, I've, I'm always chatting to people in the coffee queue or what some people want to talk. Others don't. If they quite clearly don't or they've got their earphones in or whatever, just leave them alone. But most people do want to talk. And then when you talk to them, you actually discover something interesting. And again, it's not going with a, 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 an approach of I'm going to get something out of this conversation whilst I'm queuing for my coffee. But it passes the time and you might discover something interesting along the way. So... I think always be open um, to conversation, definitely. Definitely. And I was running in a, um, a a small hub one time here in Sydney. I was running these like community get-togethers with all the different entrepreneurs and I was trying over and over to share with them about pitching for what they want. So they were very good at saying, I do this and that in my business and these are the types of clients I want. 
but they left off the very last bit about pitching or asking is probably a better way of saying it, asking for what they needed in terms of help or what they wanted in terms of help. And, and like your um, young lady, there was a young gentleman there who'd come to Australia. He, he can't remember his business area now. Um, but when he was saying what he did, he didn't say anything about project management at all. And then when I explained this concept in this workshop to them and, and they got it and I said, and he started to talk about project management and I said, well, you know, I know project management and I know all these people and the associations. So I gave him those leads, like you were saying, for him to then make those connections with people I introduced him to, et cetera. But he would never have even asked for it unless I was doing this class specifically on pitching on what you need next in your business or asking for what you need next in your business in that very gentle way of saying, if somebody can help, you know, this is what I'm looking for now and not having, like you're saying, that expectation that somebody will do it or not. Absolutely. And I think it's, it's much easier. If you don't ask, the answer is always going to be no. Um, so if you don't ask, you don't get now, I unfortunately have also taught my children that. So, <laughs> so I spend a lot of time going, oh, no, I wish I'd never taught them that. But it does mean that it's going to open up more opportunities for them. Uh, I remember, I think it was one of my husband's great uncles or something, who said to me, it's easier to ask for forgiveness than it is to ask for permission which again, I don't want to teach my children that, but it is about that. If you, you need to ask for what you want and not in a pushy, pushy way, that just wouldn't work here in Australia and particularly where I am in Brisbane, people would go running to actively avoid you, but you still have to know what you want. And I think that again, that comes back down to that list that you make, know what you actually want and you don't necessarily need a map of how you're going to get it, but you need to know where you want to go. Uh, and you might go off and veer off somewhere along the way, but have some kind of idea. Um, and yeah, sorry, I've gone off a little bit along the way. That's all right. <laughs> you just reminded me of the aeroplane analogy as well, where, you know, when a plane's going from A to B, it actually yeah. doesn't go in a straight line. It can go like this on its way. And um, life's journey tends to, and, and looking for work tends to be like that as well. You know, you, you might be meeting somebody for a coffee that you think is going to give you a job, but it doesn't happen. And then you, yeah. you talk to somebody like for coffee and they say, I'll go and talk to this person. And, and so um, very much like that aeroplane going from A to B, looking yeah. for work and life's journey tends to be more like a zigzag. <laughs> That reminds me of the first time long haul flight I ever went on. Oh, it's 1997 and it cost about 50p. I exaggerate, <laughs> of course, but it went from London to Nairobi to Cape Town, which, if you look at it on a map, is not in any way straight line. <laughs> but I think it was that's why it was so cheap to get there and, and what have you. But anyway, <laughs> I digress. <laughs> but it is the and having those conversations as well you might think that that conversation is going to take you nowhere but it could do I've had two conversations with two ladies today that I thought I'll talk to them and we we're working on two different projects completely different projects together um so perfect it wasn't just a nice chat it it could well lead to some success in the future so yeah, definitely. Be open-minded. Definitely. Yeah, I think that that's a wonderful um, aspect of, you know, getting out there and making the list and, and, and having that power of retraction, that positive thinking around you. So if people wanted to um, reach out to you about roles that they may want for themselves or for people that they know in that tech space, what's the best way of getting hold of you? So I'm very active on LinkedIn, always posting this, that and the other. Um, my LinkedIn profile is Nicola Christina Steele. So that's Nicola without an H, N-I-C-O-L-A, Christina with an A on the end, 
steel, S-T-W-L, without an E on the end. I thought it was a lovely, simple name, but there are so many different ways to spell it. So Nicola Christina Steele, um, and also the website, which is jjptalent.com.au. Jessica Jasmine Purdy is the easy way to remember it. Um, and yeah, just reach out, connect with me. Um, it doesn't need to be an essay about why you want to connect. It could be, hey, I heard you on Michelle's um, session or um, I love what you do from a purpose-led perspective or whatever. Um, or I'm from the UK, it'd be nice to connect, whatever, you, whatever you're interested in. Or so. I'm from Yorkshire and I want to talk to somebody in Queensland. That's well, exactly. <laughs> we'll have a nice cup of tea. That's it, that strong Yorkshire tea absolutely um, and if, if you were to give your younger self some advice what would that advice be okay so um I think I mentioned that I was a little bit of a rebel when I was younger I had quite a draconian father who was very very strict and I think if you you are you brought up by strict parents it gives you those rebel tendencies so I wasn't the best student at school. I passed all my exams, but probably not as well as I could have. I went to uni. I partied hard. I had a wonderful time. I have lots of stories. But my advice probably would have been to study more and appreciate more is on offer than maybe spending as much time in the pub or in nightclubs that I did. Um, although, Michelle, I don't regret those times because the older you get, the less time you spend in clubs and pubs and what have you. And as I say, lots and lots of stories to tell. So um, they sometimes bring a, a smile or a giggle to, to me. So, Oh, yeah. fabulous. And, and <laughs> I, I can hear as well that, that different theme again coming through of freedom, which if yeah. um, you had quite an authoritarian family when you were growing up, it explains and it makes a lot of sense that there was a freedom when you were younger in the nightclubs and the clubs and pubs, and then you've set it up so beautifully for yourself by having um, your own business and, and having that freedom now. But Nicola, yeah, yeah. we could talk, I know, for hours more, but thank you so much for coming on the show, show today. Thank you. Well, thank you very much for having me. I know I could carry on chattering away forever, so. <laughs> but um, thank you and um, thanks for having me. Wonderful. And to all the wonderful viewers again, thank you for tuning in again to yet another fabulous session with the Nic lovely Nicola Steele today, sharing some of her insights and suggestions for how you can create a successful mindset. But for now, from my heart to your heart, be great, be fabulous and be you. Thank you.